Hello again and welcome to the thermodynamics module, uh, lecture number seven. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion on open systems today, uh, focusing on the application of those equations that we derived during the last lecture. And just to re recap what we did, let me write down those equations. So we had the unsteady flow energy equation, you may recall, uh, was the derivative of the energy in a control volume, plus we have this extra term that we didn't see when we were looking at closed systems, where it was a boundary term uh, for our CV, and we had this term EH uh, dm dot um, equals Q dot minus shaft work now, WS dot. So that was the and steady flow energy equation. And for the steady flow energy equation, we simply just remove this first, this first term here. So steady flow energy equation was this, this equation, uh, EH dm dot equals Q dot minus WS dot. Um, our EH there, if you recall, was simply H plus a half, v squared for velocity squared there plus g z z z being the elevation um, so that was the steady flow energy equation so a steady flow energy equation uh, this is the important equation as far as this course is concerned um, and what i'd like to do is be able to apply this equation to uh, what we're going to call adiabatic machines um, we arrive at a very simple form of this equation, uh, which you may recall when we've got a single entrance and exit. Uh, this equation reduces to uh, m dot uh, e2h minus e1h uh, equals q dot minus ws dot. And if we uh, well, if we don't know the mass dot, or we can transform this equation again and divide through by the m dot, and we found another simplification, that E2H minus E1H is equal to Q uh, minus WS, um, where, Q dot, where Q is Q dot over m dot, and that is the rate of heat transfer into our system, our control volume, um per unit kilogram uh of um of of the flow through the system uh, of the mass flow through the system and similarly for this term this is the power power output from our system of course uh and this term uh which is in it's in kilowatts generally that's uh, rate uh this is in uh, kilojoules per kilogram the units for these things uh, kilojoules per kilogram uh, for Q and, and W, S, um, and again, because we're driven through by the M dot, which is the mass flow rate going through the system, this is the uh, kilojoules per kilogram of mass flow through the system. So that's a little bit of subtlety there. Uh, we can substitute in uh, this expression there, substitute for the E's, uh, but we tend to find, and a lot of the systems I'm going to look at, we're going to simplify it to uh, the mechanical terms are not going to be considered necessarily. Uh, but we'll, we'll have a look to see when we can re reduce them. So let's write, let's put this in there then. So let's uh, fuller form then is to write this as H2 minus H1 uh, plus a half V2 squared minus V1 squared uh, plus G uh, Z2 minus Z1. Uh, equals little q minus ws. Uh, okay, I'll put some brackets on that. Okay, so that is the, the, the more simplest form uh, that we can think of, including the mechanical terms. Uh, but if we lose the mechanical terms, then it, it drops down to uh, just h2 minus h1 equals q minus ws, and that can be applied to quite a lot of systems we find, that we want to find anyway. 
So that's where we got to as far as the uh, open systems were concerned. The difference as far as the closed system was concerned, we just didn't have this term, of course. Uh, this, is, this is the added bit that takes account of the mass uh, flowing through the system, in and out of the system. Um, and and we, we last time looked at what, the fact that H appears rather than U. Uh, and re the reason it did, of course, was to do with the fact that I'm now shaft work here, not the total work here, the displacement work due to the fluid pushing back the boundary, um, give rise to the enthalpy appearing in our in our equation. So enthalpy is quite good. It's uh, um, it's um, tabulated, and um, we know a lot about that and it's quite useful that we've got that, so it just accounts automatically for the, any displacement work that is uh, taking place uh, due to the fluid uh, exit and, and, and entering the, the control volume. So what adiabatic machines? This is the thing I want to look at, adiabatic machines. A machines. There's quite a number of these that we're going to consider. So I just want to consider applying the uh, steady flow energy equation, um, this equation essentially, to uh, our adiabatic machine. So uh, let's start off with um, uh, um, a, a turbine. Now that's, let's look at the first one, which could be a turbine. So quite an important machine. Uh, essentially, its purpose is to produce work that's what turbines are about. Uh, you'll find them uh, uh, so in power stations, of course, uh, for electricity. Uh, you may also find, well, you do find them in, uh, you can find them in tanks, uh, for driving tanks. You can find them uh, in aircraft, um, uh, again, for producing work. Also, for us, we look at the aircraft. Uh, uh, we tend to use the... Um, uh, the exit velocity there, so and put that through a nozzle to give us a bit of thrust for an aircraft. Uh, so there's uh, some mechanical terms uh, uh, involved in that, uh, and we look at that as well. So, but first of all, let's have a look at it. My turbine uh, is just going to consist of. Um, it's going to look like this. It's my drawn of a turbine, nice simple turbine. Uh, we're going to have a shaft coming out of this turbine. Uh, we're going to have uh, work uh, WS dot uh, power output from the turbine. We're going to have, um, so that's T for turbine, let's say. We're going to have uh, entering the turbine at state one, uh, some material, so a mass flow rate. Um, uh, and we're at this point at state one, uh, we're going to assume we know something and uh, some information about, and we're going to have H1 there. We want H1. Quite often for a lot of problems, you might not be given H1 directly. We have our two property rule, which we can generally apply. So as long as we've got uh, two properties there, we can always work out um, We can always work out the rest. So but let's assume for argument's sake we've got H1 uh, and uh, and. On the out on the output at point two, uh, we've got H two. Uh, we're going to have a control volume. So let me put a control volume around this thing. So I'm imagining uh, this is our control volume after all. Uh, there's a control volume surrounding the system of interest, which is the turbine. Uh, so in into the control volume, we've got uh, mass flow rate m dot. Uh, and out of it, we've got M dot coming out, mass flow rate. It's a steady state situation. So we're thinking of our steady flow energy equation as far as that's concerned. Uh, we want to apply the, the, the equation to this. Um, now, generally, as I say, quite often, the purpose of a turbine is to produce uh, work. Uh, so that's the prime function of a turbine. Uh, and when we look at our equation, uh, we, we'll, we can generally quite often ignore uh, the mechanical terms. I'm going to do this most of the time. I'm going to ignore these mechanical terms. 
And our equation for this turbine then uh, boils down to, and set in, by the way, if I set my W is equal to W dot S, so the power over M dot, so I'm going to, that term, I'm going to take the view that Q is zero, might be surprising, turbines are very hot, uh, and they will give off uh, some energy in terms of heat transfer, but um, the, com the comparison with the, uh, these values of Q compared to the Ws uh, uh, makes it such that we can generally ignore it, uh, because the main function of a turbine after all is to produce work. Uh, so, uh, compared to the, you know, the, the, the massive number you get here, this is insignificant. So, we generally take the view, uh, Q is approximately zero, and we end up then, for our turbine, as H2 minus H1 uh, is equal to uh, minus Ws. So, H2 minus H1 is equal to... Uh, is equal is equal to that that equation there. Now, if we know if we know the H values, then we can work the work out. Um, um, what's what's happening, of course, with uh, with the with a turbine? It's given up its energy to um, in the an expansion process, essentially. Um, and typically, therefore, one finds that. Uh, um, this thing will be negative. The energy uh, at the exit of the turbine in the, in the thermodynamic energy, uh, the enthalpy therefore is less than, so H2 invariably less than H1. Uh, this thing then is negative, uh, there's a negative sign there, multiply both sides by a, a negative sign and you get work which is positive. This is giving off positive work, isn't it? The turbine is there for producing work. So this is sort of indicating. Uh, so H2 and H1, possibly if it's a steam turbine, we can get it from the, uh, we can get the information about what's the, what the H's are in relation to temperature. Maybe we know the temperature at the, uh, at the inlet and outlet. We don't know. We could. Um, and if, it, if we... Uh, uh, we might know the pressure as well. So given two properties, we can generally work out uh, other, other, other properties, of course. Uh, if it's a gas, an ideal gas, or a, per well, a perfect gas, we haven't gone into that yet, but we, we have another formula as well, don't we, for it, the difference of H's. We could use uh, Cp, uh, T2 minus T1, for instance, uh, which is equal to a minus... Ws, um, where, you know, if it's a, a perfect gas, the Cp is a constant, so that's what they're defined to be. So uh, potentially for gases, these type of formulas come in uh, for steam and uh, pure substances that need, you know, vapours. In particular, we generally have to tabulate it. We've got the tables to get the data uh, to look at these things. Um, so for a turbine, uh, you can see we can apply our steady flow energy equation quite readily to that uh, to work out the work uh, per unit kilogram of mass flow. Or alternatively, if you do have the M, M dot specified as well, you can work out the power. Uh, but this, the point I'm making about this, is this is positive because uh, you, you can multiply both uh, because this is uh, negative. Uh, yes, but what's happening is uh, when you have a turbine, high energy fluid is coming into that turbine, uh, lower energy material is leaving it. Uh, and generally, therefore, when we look at the temperature, uh, T2 is less than T1. So we have high T1, low T2. Uh, negative. Therefore, W of the shaft work is positive uh, in that case. So it kind of makes sense uh, what the uh, what the um, the uh, what the way this is working. So that's a turbine, fairly straightforward. Uh, if you can't ignore, sometimes you you don't want to ignore if you if the 
with these terms that are significant enough, uh, usually the, the height isn't generally not, but it, sometimes you might want to include the velocity, then it, you would use the full equation. Um, um, usually you give them guidance on that in the, uh, if you're given, asked to do a question on this type of thing. Um, you know, if you know the velocities, then you can gauge if they're important or not, so you can include, include them or not, uh, as the case may be. So that's one, that's an adiabatic machine. The other one is the compressor. The compressor, um, which is essentially the same thing, but, uh, uh, and I'm going to draw that, in, uh, it's essentially the same diagram, uh, but I'm going to do it this way. If you, I'll write it this one. So this is my compressor. I'm going to put a C for that one. Um, and what happens is, of course, um, material comes in at point one. So we can call that H1. We, 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 take, we know that. And it comes out suitably compressed at H2. Um, and we have a shaft. Um, in this case, And I'm going to put this as minus WS dot. Um, so generally, um, the compressor, you have to do work on a compressor. So let me do a control volume. Uh, let's look at this. There's my control volume around this thing. Uh, on our compressor. Um, so what's coming in? Uh, well, with a, with a compressor, uh, you're basically compressing, you're raising the pressure, aren't you? Uh, um, try, raising a, a low pressure. So you might have a pressure coming in here and a, a P2 coming out. Um, so you're compressing generally a gas um, and you're doing work on that. You're having to do work on that. Um, um, so you, you tend to be raising the energy uh, in the in the uh, in the material by by doing work. Uh, the sit again, it's adiabatic. Uh, the assumption is so again we can say W S uh, is equal to uh, W S dot over M dot. Q will take the view as approximately zero, and if you look at uh, your equation. Uh, we end up with exactly the same equation, ignoring the mechanical, we're going to end up with H2 minus H1 is equal to minus WS dot, that was our equation there, we've neglected the Q, we kill these off, we've got that, it's the, the same thing. Um, uh, the difference between this, the difference between this is that uh, whilst in this case energy was being uh, dragged uh, out of the, out of the, the fluid, uh, thermal fluid, so we had high energy going in, uh, expansion took place, low energy material comes out, uh, we have quite the opposite here. So we have uh, a lower energy material comes in, high energy uh, comes out, uh, and therefore this thing uh, is positive uh, now, and therefore the WS, you put a minus sign on that side, it turns out to be negative, uh, which is that, um, yeah, work is uh, uh, so this thing's negative, this thing's negative. So the way I'm looking at this, the work coming out. Um, yeah, the work, uh, sorry, I use now convention, the, uh, the power done by the uh, turbine is negative um, in that case. So, uh, so essentially the, the same thing, uh, no, uh, the only difference being uh, the same equation applies to it. Uh, you just end up with a, a change in sign as a consequence of the uh, ING material coming out, low energy coming in, low energy machine going in, I, uh, ING material going in, low energy coming out, uh, sorry, low energy, ING, yeah, uh, in that case, uh, for the compressor. Uh, so that's the compressor. Um, so fairly easy to do, no problems. Uh, to analyze these things, really, we're using our equations. Um, so, what other devices have we got? Um, uh, the throttle valve. How about the throttle valve? 
little valve is uh, another device um, which essentially uh, you can think of it as a uh, where the, uh, a pressure drop a very large pressure drop across the throttle valve uh, even a partially or a partially closed valve um, in a water supply or any uh, fluid supply uh, would cause a pressure drop across it uh, or even an orifice plate would do it so you can imagine a pipe um, where you've got uh, a very s a small orifice uh, and you've got flow flow well let's do our control volume uh, so we've got our CV um, and we've got our flow coming in into this thing so this is M dot of course well this is point one let's call this one and coming out at the exit to um, so M dot in M dot of course M dot is the uh, coming out of this thing um, and again it's a very rapid flow generally the amount of heat transfer in such a thing is not going to be great so if we applied our uh, we looked at our equation so um, well let's write let's write it down we've got uh, the equation remember was uh, was um, h2 minus h1 plus a half v2 squared minus v1 squared um, plus g z2 minus z1 is equal to q minus omega s shaft work um, well in this case there's no shaft so I think we can get rid of that there's no it's adiabatic there's, the, there's very little heat loss in this thing let's get rid of that uh, the height is not changing certainly let's get rid of that uh, so we have the situation um, the velocities, uh, well, the velocities might well be the same as well. So uh, if, the, if the, the pipe's diameters are the same, uh, the velocities could be the same. So we could end up, the most simplest simplification you get is H2 minus H1 is equal to zero or H2 is equal to H1. So one of the consequences of a throttle valve um, so generally we've got P1 and P2 here, uh, we'll have T1 and T2 of course, the other properties we're interested in. Um, the, and what generally happens with a, a throttle valve is that uh, there's a, a large pressure drop. So the, the pressure at P2 is significantly less than, uh, than, than, uh, than, um, than P1. So T, what we have then is P2 significantly less than P1. This is this is what happens. Uh, so it's like an expansion process that happens in expansions, doesn't it? Where you expand things, uh, you get this type of situation. Uh, so a very simple throttle valve has caused a large pressure drop across it. Um, and one of the consequences of that is that. Uh, you can affect the temperature. This is one of the things that can happen with this. Uh, for instance, with our two property rule, uh, we have that uh, um, we have that H could be a function of uh, so H one could be a function of T one and P one, or we could write it as uh, that T one T one is a function of the P one and H one. Yes. You could, have it, you could have it that way. Any two properties are related to any of the two. Uh, this is our two property rule and T2, uh, a function of P2 and uh, H2. So the thing about it, the thing about it is that what's happening here, we notice the, uh, we've got this uh, constant entropy uh, uh, asymphalpic condition across a throttle valve generally uh, ignoring this term sometimes we put that term in um, 
Uh, I'll mention that in a second, but this is this is quite often throttle valves are uh, uh, identified by the fact that the constant enthalpy across them is one of the assertions. Uh, so we've got a situation that the temperatures, uh, depending on uh, H, so we've got temperature depending on H and P here, yes, um, and also uh, at, a, at the other state point, uh, and what we're finding is that the enthalpies are the same here. And the only thing that's changed is the pressures. Yes. And the consequences are, the likelihood is that, uh, that, the, that uh, there's be a temperature, a temperature change. Uh, and usually one finds, not always, but usually one finds that you find that T1 uh, is less than T2. This is what you find when you do this. And sorry. <laughs> T2 is less than T1. You get a, a drop, a drop in the temperature. And consequently, we tend to use these in refrigeration systems. We'll always find throttle valves in refrigeration systems. Because it's a way of dropping the temperature. Quite often you need to drop the temperature so you can start cooling down with the stuff in your in your fridge. And we will look at refrigeration systems in a bit more detail when we get on to heat engines. Uh, but this particular device, a very simple device, uh, admittedly, where you've got um, a, a pressure drop across the device, uh, but and plan your steady flow energy equation, we see that it's a nice enthalpic device, constant entropy, uh, and this has an effect, as you'd expect, on the on the properties of the uh, of the uh, with our two property rule in force. Um, H1 and H2 the same, you've got a massive difference in pressure, something's happened to the temperature. Uh, and the usual consequence of it is that you get a temperature drop. So a temperature drop across uh, throttle, throttle valve. is usual, let's see, put it like that. Uh, and we can, we can easily, uh, do, you know, apply in the steam table, given our data, we can look at examples like that. And I think I've, I've put one in the notes for you, where there's invariably a temperature drop uh, as a consequence of this condition, that the H is remain the same, but the pressures do not. And therefore we find there's a, there's a, a significant Pressure and temperature drop across the valve, across the, across the uh, throttle valve as well. Uh, so that's quite a useful device. Again, very simply uh, analysed. Uh, um, if we include the, if we include the velocities, then um, well, what we can find then this, these, this, uh, these all vanish as before, and we find that H one, uh, H one plus a half V1 squared is equal to uh, H2 plus a half V2 squared. Uh, this thing uh, usually called H0, which is the stagnation, enth stagnation enthalpy or total enthalpy as well. I think that's another word for it. So uh, usually called the um, yeah, stagnation. Enthalpy. Uh, and certainly in aero systems it comes in, we find uh, it's quite important there. Uh, for the type of systems we're not looking at, it tends not to be such a big importance, but anyways, it's just a definition of it, you know. Uh, you define H to have, uh, had in the velocity terms, it gives you a, it's just a diff another name given to something. It does appear elsewhere, so. I should mention it at least. So that's a throttle valve again, just to plan the uh, steady flow energy equation. Straight, not straightforward, nothing much going on. Uh, what else have we got? Um, oh, a nozzle. We should have a look at a nozzle, yes. <coughs> should have a look at a nozzle, certainly. Uh, Uh, usually, usually with these devices, there's a lot of, uh, uh, well, we're going to look at, uh, at um, 
uh, reversible and irreversible systems on the course. Um, these are systems that you can run in both directions. Uh, the two devices I've done so far, um, the compressor and the, uh, and the turbine, uh, those are devices you can run in two directions. They are reversible. Uh, but um, uh, the throttle bar is most certainly not one of them. Uh, you get a lot of uh, disturbance when you do this type of thing in your in your system. Uh, lots of losses involved. Uh, but we'll talk about that a bit later. When we get onto entropy, we'll come back and look at these devices again uh, to try to see a bit, a bit more understanding of what's happening with them. So let's have a look at the nozzle. That's another one, another another adiabatic device. These are found, of course, in um, in aircraft uh, propulsion, propulsion uh, systems. So essentially, my nozzle. Uh, there's all kinds of nozzle designs. Uh, let's keep let's keep it quite simple. Uh, now let's, oh, oh, yeah. So there we go. There's my my nozzle looks a bit like that. Uh, so coming on the in, coming on this way then. Uh, let's have it as um, flow coming in, flow coming out. Now we're going to call this V1. Uh, v2 so velocity is important here I guess so we can't uh, probably get rid of that so easily but let's put a control volume around this thing control volume um, we've got m dot uh, m dot steady state situation so m dot what the mass flux uh, is the same in and out uh, we're going to apply our, uh, our energy equation to it here it is Still got it there, and uh, very little change in elevation, I think. So, in fact, the approximations I've applied here look pretty good. Uh, no shaft work, there's no shaft there, uh, there's no heat transfer, essentially, it's all very rapid. Uh, and uh, so, applying the, our equation, we find that h2 uh, minus h1 uh, plus a half v2 squared minus v1 squared. Uh, is equal to zero, uh, or H two, uh, H two plus a half V two squared is equal to uh, H one uh, plus a half uh, V one squared. So this is the this is the um, uh, approximation then for a nozzle. Uh, usually V, well, if you look at V2 is generally fast, uh, bigger than V1, generally, usually fine. So if this comes from a sort of reservoir, a V1 might be considered to be approximately zero. So this is another approximation. So you might be able to get rid of uh, the, the V1 term. So possibly v1 approximately zero that might be a possibility uh, to get it down to its simplest form uh, and then of course what you can do you can rewrite this equation uh, take this to uh, take this to the other side and we'll find that v2 is equal to h well two times h1 minus h2 the square root of yes uh, so that might be uh, common velocity equation given for that's a two, it might not look like it um, <coughs> um, for for a nozzle so that gives you uh, um, a very simple form to, for working out the velocity uh, if you don't know it from the change in enthalpies uh, for a nozzle so uh, Again, we'll come back to the nozzle. Uh, it's quite it's designed so that everything the flow goes very smoothly through this thing. Uh, so usually, um, we can generally run this in two directions. Uh, and when we look at reversibility, we'll uh, consider that again. Uh, um, so anything else? Um, oh yes, uh, one more device. I think uh, a heat exchanger. Well, let's have a look at heat exchanger. It sounds like that should not be an adiabatic device. Uh, 
uh, but uh, surprisingly, uh, it is. Uh, okay, so that's uh, that's a nozzle. Um, and last application I want to consider then is a heat exchanger. Very important, of course, uh, used all over the place, as you can imagine. Uh, um, so let's have a look at that, see what we have to do. So heat exchanger. So heat exchanger. So, so my heat exchanger, this is just a box. Let's do it as a box. And uh, what we're going to have is um, we're going to have fluid going into this thing. Um, I need some notation. Um, so one uh, point one, and we're going to have m dot. Um, what I'm going to call it? Fluid one. Let's have it like that. m dot f one. Can I call it that? Uh, and that fluid comes out. Let's, I'm going to come. I'm going to bring it out here, uh, and I'm going to go m dot uh, uh, fluid one. That comes out of steady state. This device, so that's m dot fluid one as well. So the fluid goes in. Uh, one source of fluid goes in, and I'm going to have another one um, at this point. Um, so that's state one. This is state two. Okay, let's call this state three. Uh, M dot fluid two. Hopefully, we don't get the, uh, <laughs> the numbers mixed up. The, so this is this is one fluid, uh, and this is the, another one. Let's call this um, state point four. And this fluid then comes out here. So M dot it doesn't mix. Um, so the fluids don't mix in there. There's a lot of pipes. And they're passing energy uh, heat heat between them certainly, but as far as our uh, control volume is concerned, we're going to put it around the whole thing. Uh, so that's as far as that's concerned. Uh, now then, uh, there's no work on this. Uh, there's no. Um, so let's write. I'll just write down the equation, the steady flow energy equation again. It's this one. It's HF. Well. Um, yeah, let's do it. I'll do that. HF dm dot uh, for gamma uh, control volume is equal to Q dot, no, not Q, Q, WS. That's our, that's our steady flow energy equation. We, um, uh, oops, no, let's, oops, don't watch it. Let's, don't do that. <laughs> uh, Q dot minus WS dot. Yes, let's do, let's do it like that. So it's, it's a rate form. <laughs> There's a rate on this form at the moment. I've got a rate in there. So I have to have the rate form. I'm not divided through by M dot yet. Uh, but we're going to assume, in fact, that, uh, okay, there's energy exchange going on in the control volume, clearly. But uh, as far as these terms are concerned, they're looking at the energies, uh, uh, not inside of it, but from, from the surroundings. And as far as the surroundings are concerned, there's clearly no shaft work here. So that, that clearly vanishes. And there's no, there's no heat transfer either. The losses to the environment are going to be pretty small. The, the energy transfers are taking place between the two fluids uh, in that case. Um, and this equation then, uh, well, that just writes, well, in its simplest form, ignoring the velocity, let's just go for the enthalpies here. Uh, we're going to have m, m dot m dot fluid 2 times uh, h, uh, well fluid 2 is 4 and, four and 3, so h4 minus h3, plus m dot fluid 1 times uh, um, uh, 2 minus two minus 1, so h2 minus 1, uh, h1. That thing is equal to zero is the equation uh, for that for the heat exchanger. Um, so that's uh, bear in mind. You, you may recall that uh, usually when you go on out, you, you treat it as a positive uh, for the equation. When you look at this, this this thing changes sign depending on where we go on in or out. Uh, uh, when you go on out, you treat it as a positive. Uh, so that's going out. 
So that's M dot F2, the fluid two, H floor is deposited there. Uh, that one's going in. Fluid two at three, that's negative. That's the reason for the sign. Uh, M dot fluid one, uh, positive because of the going out. And fluid going in, negative. So you get a negative sign there. And that is the that is the equation. Uh, depending on the nature of the fluids, of course, we may get them from the uh, we may get them from the tables. Um, if the gas is involved, then we might have the specific heat properties. Uh, we might know the temperatures, for instance, at these points. We might know something about these outward conditions. So we might have T4, for instance. We might have P4. Who knows? H4, of course, that's the one we're after. Uh, quite often, you're given some information. And uh, uh, you're trying to find other bits of information at these endpoints to be able to solve the problem. I mean, the only thing you really want is the H's. But usually, uh, H's are not given to you. Uh, generally, as we mentioned earlier, that H, H's are not generally measurable. Things that we can measure, of course, at these inlet and outlet uh, temperatures and pressures, they're very easy to get. Uh, so quite often, we're given this information um and, but we know our two property rule uh, given two bits of information um we can we can uh, find uh, other properties all the other properties at these points at these state points as we call them then so that's the that is the um uh, heat exchanger uh you can you can break this down into a uh, slightly more conventional form if you do. This is quite a, a nice way to write it, but um, you can also imagine this as two bits of the of uh, two systems sort of glued together where heat transfers are taking place between them. Between them. Uh, but if you add those equations together, you will end up back with this equation. So this is the this is the um, this is the uh, the simplest form. Well, we'll do that. Let's, so you can, I could imagine it. Possibly like this, couldn't I? I could imagine this, uh, if you like, as a two parts of a, the same system. Yeah. So in this case, I've got my um, M dot F one going in, and we've got our uh, M dot F one going out. Uh, steady state situation. Um, and what I'm thinking, and I've got the this one M. Um, M dot F2, uh, going this way, and M dot F2, of course, and this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, these are our state points. Um, and in this case, we can put our control volumes like this, uh, two control volumes. Yeah, and well, in that case, we'd have to. If I'm doing a control on this bit, then there's a then there must be a, a Q value. Uh, there's a, a Q value going into this thing. Uh, well, a Q dot there must be a heat transfer um, entering the system. Yes, uh, on the on the whole thing, it didn't matter because the heat transfers are inside. But now I'm sort of going inside to trying to find out what that heat transfer is. Um, and similarly, there must be um, there must be. Well, that's uh, what I, what I want to call that Q one two um, uh, with this system one. So Q one, and similarly, this equation as uh, let's call this Q dot two. Yeah. So applying the our, our uh, equation again, we uh, let's apply the uh, steady flow energy equation to this system. We find that uh, uh, well, we find that m dot f one times h two minus h one is equal to q dot one. That's what we're saying, yeah. Um, the energy I'm treating the, the Q going as positive here. Uh, clearly, one of them is losing energy, and the other one's not. Uh, but then, then we've got the other we've got the other system M dot F two, and that's going to be H four minus H three. 
and that's equal to q uh, two dot yes um, but of course uh, in this case q1 dot is equal to minus q2 dot yeah that's the that's the that's the uh, the balance in other words we assume that the ng coming from one is entering the other one this is what you're doing there and if i add those two together these two equations together you'll find that these cancel yeah and you get back there so it's a you know uh, of course this is my adiabatic machine <laughs> Uh, uh, each part of these, uh, you couldn't ignore the heat transfer. There's no shaft work, uh, but you couldn't ignore the heat transfer. So you could have done it like that. Uh, if you wanted to know something about the heat transfer rates inside uh, inside the machine. Uh, well, uh, one last thing before I finish then. Uh, for so a lot of the problems that when you solve these things, um, you tend to be given not enough information. Uh, so usually what happens is you've got your, you've got your control volume. Um, so, well, you've got a control volume. Uh, and quite often you've got information going in. You've got state one uh, and then state two. Uh, that's my CV. Uh, and usually what we're after, you can see what we're after always, we're after H's, we're after, we're after um, uh, H1 and H2. This is what we're after, H1. The thing is what we're after, to, to apply our, our steady flow energy equation to these things, wherever the system is, or all the devices I looked at, uh, the H's are what we required. Um, but in a lot of the cases, you're not given H. Uh, and sometimes you're not even given two properties to get it. Uh, and then you have to think about what might be conserved across this across the system. So what doesn't change? Um, for instance, on on uh, heat exchangers, uh, one of the things that you can reasonably uh, approximate is the pressure. Quite often on the on any line here, the pressure drop is in thermodynamic terms is tiny. So quite often, if I'm given the pressure at one side of this thing, I might well know it's up there. It might then give me the information I need to get the H. Um, and uh, there's a table in the in the notes uh, at the at the end of the chapter, chapter five, the end of chapter five, which tells you what what's conserved and what isn't. So I really suggest you have a look at that. Um, some things we've not. Uh, well, so a lot of the devices are uh, things like um, uh, entropy is conserved. Uh, now we've not we're not we've not done entropy yet, um, but um, given that uh, we were able to read it from the tables, uh, you can you can use it. Uh, so um, so that is something. Uh, uh, you might want to consider. <laughs> I think some, one of the assignment questions is uh, is uh, very much uh, you you I would expect you'd be able to read ent entropy from the shape because you get you know it doesn't make it if it's ent enthalpy ent entropy internal energy what difference does it make it's in the table you can read it uh, so uh, it may be the case that uh, the property at the end. You might have S S one and S two, uh, and a lot of the devices uh, that we consider today uh, did have this property that S two was equal to is equal to S one. Did have that property, uh, uh, so entropy was conserved for the turbine for the compressor. Um, I missed out the pump. I should have introduced the pump today as well. Have a look at that. It's essentially a compressor, but it applies to liquids. Um, so the pump is something uh, we uh, uh, we should have we should have mentioned. Uh, it's essentially the, the analysis for the compressor is the same. Uh, well, again, even for the pump, uh, that is true. It's, uh, constant constant entropy. Uh, the nozzle is, is true for that as well, as it turns out. Um, and uh, not so much for uh, the throttle, no, the throttle, we, for the throttle valve we found that it was H2 is equal to H1, that, that in fact was what was conserved across the throttle valve, it was the enthalpy was conserved. 
Um, so that was quite interesting. Um, and uh, as I say, exchanges, it tends to be pressure that's conserved across those files. So the table in the notes that uh, you can look at uh, and you can familiarize yourself with what is conserved across uh, these devices. Um, because as I said, quite often the questions are poised uh, that you need to get the H1 and H2, but they, they give you maybe one property, you need two to get it. Um, so, and you need therefore quite often, if I'm giving you the H S1 here, and I might give you some other property like T1, okay, that allows you to get the H1. Uh, and it might be that uh, I'm only giving you, um, you know, an, a single property here, such as T2, uh, but then you can say, oh, well, uh, for my device, device, I know that entropy is conserved, so I know that I can say that's S2. That gives me two properties that would lead me to H2. Uh, that's the idea. So a lot of these devices, the questions are like that, uh, which is quite realistic because, a lot, you know, you never give an H's. Uh, so temperatures and pressures are generally are given. Um, and... Sometimes when you've got insufficient data, you can uh, you can look at what, what is unchanging across the device. Um, so a little bit of inside knowledge about the nature of the device um, and what reasonable approximations you can use to figure that out. Uh, anyways, I tabulated all for you in the, in the end of chapter in the end of chapter five. Uh, so in a sense, this is the all I really want to say as far as open systems are concerned. Um, we're rattling through this quite quickly as it turns out. Um, we've got to do um, gases. That's the, that's the next thing I've got to look at. Um, before we get on to the really uh, more nuanced material. So I've tried to get through this quite quickly, to be honest. Um, uh, just giving you the main features, the main important points, the way to think about things. Uh, I'm setting that out for you in these in these uh, lectures, um, so that uh, you can read. As I said, you have to read on this course uh, a lot more of the sort of fill in the details of the background information, um, uh, and so that I can spend. Uh, a lot more time uh, on the when we go on to entropy. When we go on to the second law, uh, then and when we and bringing entropy into more understanding about entropy, uh, and we can start to solve uh, uh, a lot of the problems with the full arsenal uh, of uh, techniques at our disposal. Um, and uh, that thermodynamics comes really, really interesting, much more interesting. At the moment, at the moment, we've, we've just got conservation of energies, uh, essentially, being applied uh, to things. We have not yet looked at uh, um, what what kind of things are allowed, what kind of processes are allowed, and this is where thermodynamics really tells you uh, entropy, and the second law really tells you about that. What what energy exchanges can take place. Um, and even though energy might be conserved, it doesn't mean that you can do it. Uh, but the, th the second law tells you about that. And we, so we're heading in that direction. Um, we, we're giving information on the uh, pure substances, on vapours. Uh, chapter four, you need to read that. Uh, it's really just, as far as I'm concerned, it's just really about being able to find out, um, you know, other properties from... From certain properties that you know, um, uh, looking in the tables, when we look at gases, it turns out you've got formulas, um, which you can use analytical formulas, uh, algebraic formulas, whatever, to uh, to relate things. And we'll, so we'll get onto that. So at this point, then uh, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.